Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be discussing all of my favorite makeup products I tried out this year. Most of them launched throughout the year with a few that I've only just discovered and I need to talk about them. So before we get into all of these products, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. I only have one primer included in today's video and it is of course the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I'm more keen on the pink one that has a bit of niacinamide in it, but I'm no stranger to the original blue one either. I just prefer this one's texture. I find it to be like a little bit thicker in a good way and it spreads a bit more evenly and quicker too. But that's just what I've noticed after finishing these two. But there are so many amazing benefits to this primer. First of all, it's really reliable. It works well with all of my foundations and I can also layer other primers or glow boosters without running into any pilling issues. And its main purpose is to help the longevity of your makeup and it does it so well. My makeup stays put way longer when I use this. I used to be a little bit of a disbeliever in primers. Like I never had a primer that I loved so much that truly made a difference that I would wanna use it every single day until this one came around. I can visually see a difference when I use this from when I don't. I feel like it also helps in the smoothness of my base. It just does it all for me and I love how I can just pick it up at the drugstore. So they really killed it with this formula. Now let's talk foundations. The foundation of the year for me has been the YSL All Hours Foundation. I use the shade LN6 and this is the one I'm wearing today. It's my go-to if I want more of like a matte velvety look to my skin or if I want a very flawless, very smooth appearance. This makes my skin look amazing no matter what condition my skin's in. It looks great when it's dry and dehydrated or when it's super, super hydrated and dewy. It works well on all of it. It has become my go-to for events or if I want a full glam look or just like this super blurred out, kind of like soft glam appearance to my skin. Its consistency is my favorite. It's one of those that feels really watery and thin, but it's full of coverage. It kind of feels like if I mixed my Armani Luminous Silk with the Lancome All Over Concealer, if I mixed those two together, and this is its baby, and it's perfect. My favorite day-to-day -day foundation, if I want more of like that velvety look to my skin, has been the Clinique Even Better Makeup SPF. I know this has been out forever, but I've only just discovered it this year. I don't know how, but it's so good. It's so thin wearing on my skin, super seamless, but it blurs out my complexion really nicely without adding so much coverage and like a visible layer to my skin. It looks like a second skin and that's why it's in today's video. And my day-to-day -day favorite, if I want a very glowy, dewy look without that dewy feel, has been the Glossier Stretch. I have been using the shade Light 2. This has a really interesting, unique texture that I've never seen before in a foundation. It almost has like a jelly feel to it, and it just layers and slides on your skin beautifully. It has such a dewy, luminous look without it feeling really greasy and heavy and just gloopy on your skin. It's very seamless, but you get that kind of model off duty appearance and what's really awesome is that you can adjust its coverage level really easily if you use a little bit it looks like a beautiful skin tint but you can build it up all the way to and it will look fantastic so these have been my three foundations of the year that impressed me the most i feel like this year was the year of concealers so let's dive into my favorites starting with this eye brightener from rare beauty so this has been one of my go-to products of the year especially on the days where i want like a no makeup makeup look it pairs really nicely with a skin tint or even if you decide to forego using a skin tint or foundation it brightens up your under eyes makes you look more alive within seconds it has just the perfect amount of coverage that it's not like a visible concealer but it's just enough that it adds like a really natural awakened look and what i really fell in love with most is its applicator it's a really nice cooling metal applicator and at first i was like this isn't going to grab enough product but it actually deposits the perfect amount for what you need with this type of product. So this one was a huge favorite. Moving on to actual concealers, I'm going to go from least coverage to most coverage. So this one is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. I love this one for day to day. It first deposits kind of like a lightish medium coverage to your under eyes, but it's very buildable. I love how this one pairs with the Clinique even better. It has that same kind of texture. It starts off with being really dewy and blendable, but then it has like this nice powdery texture that kind of sets it in place and this sets down beautifully with powder as well. Its consistency is very flattering. It doesn't grab a hold of all of your texture and fine lines. It's just 
smooths them out just like how you'd want. My second favorite concealer here has been the Physicians Formula Butter Glow Concealer. This has such a wet, liquidy consistency, but it has so much coverage, and I love how thin its formula is because it just melts in with ease. This is the concealer I'm wearing under my eyes today, as well as on my face because my foundation was a little bit dark for me. I adore how this one melts into my skin. It looks super seamless besides having like the most coverage ever. I would say it has a similar coverage level to this one right here, which is my favorite concealer of the year. This one impresses me like crazy. I also like to use this one as a foundation. I will sometimes start off with this and I'll drag down the coverage. It has so much coverage with a serum -y texture. It's not like a very liquidy, watery texture like these ones here. It has like a nice gel feel. It's very cooling, but its coverage is so intense, but very flattering. Again, it doesn't enhance any of your texture. It sits down really nicely and it stays in place like no other. It has become my new go-to and I've purchased so many different shades. I need it at all hours of the day. <laughs> Tower 28 really killed it with this formula. It's amazing. I included just one powder and it was a mindless decision. My favorite is the Givenchy Loose Powder. This is another one that has been out for a while, but I've only started using it recently. My favorite shade is the shade three. This feels like a combination of a lot of my other favorite powders. It's similar to the Huda Beauty Loose Powder in the way that it's very, very blurring and very setting. It sets all of my makeup in place, but it also has a little hint of the Kosas pressed powder which I adore because it does have this really pretty pearl that doesn't cut all of the shine out of your skin and it keeps some of the dimension but I just adore how blurring this is and it's a bit thinner looking once it's on your skin in comparison to the Huda Beauty. So I love that just more refined kind of barely there look. This is what I have pretty much all over my face for this very flawless blurred out base. It's amazing. Now let's get into my bronzers. I'm going to talk about these two kind of in the same breath because I like to use them in similar ways, but just one's a little bit different than the other. One is the Jones Row Gel Bronzer and the other is the Clinique Sunkissed Face Gelé. I love mixing these into a variety of products. First, blush if I want to make them a little bit more bronzy and summer-like, or I like to mix quite a bit of it into my foundation to create a bronzer shade that just seamlessly blends in and just looks like my natural sculpted face. I also like to mix it in with a highlighter if I want to create more of a bronzery highlight. I don't know, you can just do so much with this to give your skin a golden glow or to change products to make them more summer appropriate. So this one is nice because it's just a makeup product with no shimmer, but what makes the Clinique one very, very interesting is that it stains your skin kind of like a self tanner would. So this was awesome when I was traveling Europe and it was so, inc it was so hot. I could barely handle myself, but adding this into my makeup products ensured that my makeup was going to stay there all day. And it did even when I was sweating. Okay, I'm going to let this sit here for a minute and then I'll wipe it off. But in the meantime, I'll talk about my other favorite bronzers. This is the Surat Soleil Dew bronzer and it is stunning. It's a very unique powder consistency to me. It feels very moussey and it feels like it has a lot of moisture in it. It's very airy like and it blends on your skin gorgeously. It ha also has a really nice dimensional pearl that's super, super fine. It doesn't look like glitter or a visible pearl. It just adds like a nice glow to your skin. And I really like this shade too. It's not swatching very nice because I have very dry hands at the moment, but just so you can see it's kind of dimensional look. Stunning. I think this may have been here for long enough. See, look at that. So when you mix it in with your foundation or blushes, it's just going to make it stay. Awesome stuff. And these are newer favorites of mine, but I have been using the e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wands nonstop since I purchased them. I love the shade Fair Light for more of a contour color. I'll demo them on my hands here. So here's that one. And here is the shade Light Medium, which is my perfect bronzing color. I like mixing these two, perfect. They are definitely inspired by the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand, but I think it's a very different texture. The Charlotte Tilbury one has a little bit of a see-throughness, like a translucency to it, but these are very opaque and almost matte leaning, which I think has a beautiful place in my collection and I've been using them like crazy. They blend out super flawlessly. I don't even really have to pay attention. I can just 
talk my ears off and it will be blended to perfection. I have been saying this all year, but the highlight of the year for me has been the Rare Beauty Silky Touch Highlight. I love these, I just love them. I feel like they are reminiscent of like the 2015 highlighter, but modernized. It's very silky and seamless and it blends into your makeup wonderfully. It's what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the more pinky shade Mesmerize right here. And it pairs really cute with a pink blush, but these are super, super intense highlights. The shade I wear the most often is Exhilarate, but these reflect the light like none other. It will be perfect for those of you who like a more intense highlight, but a seamless look. It doesn't have scattered effect in its pearl. It's very seamless and smooth, and it's very consistent, and there's no glitter whatsoever. It's just one pearl that lays on the face really nicely. I love working this into my makeup quite a bit. I'll initially put a little streak of it, and then I'll start doing circular motions to really polish the pearl and make it look really flat and not like a streak on my skin. And I feel like it has like a really unique effect on the skin. It looks dewy, but not powdery. What's the word I'm looking for? I guess matte. <laughs> but that's not a good descriptor for a highlighter. But anyways, I hope you understand where I'm trying to go. I don't know why my brain's not helping me, but it's stunning, okay? <laughs> Now let's talk about my favorite blushes. And I have a few new ones to me and a few shade extensions that I'm very happy that came out this year. Okay, starting with the new formulas for me, starting off with the Givenchy Loose Powder Blushes. I feel like this is such a unique product and the shades are incredible. My favorite one, the one I use the most is Five, which is this really nice rusty red pink really cute. I also really like the shade one, which is a really pretty, vibrant, cool pink. And this is a new one to me. It's the shade four, which is like a sienna, burnt sienna kind of peachy vibe. This has been my first experience with a loose powder blush and I love it. I love how you're able to really control the amount. You can build it up super softly. It's amazing for us that are very heavy handed with our blush application. You just have full control of it and you can build it up till you're happy. And its finish is really pretty. It's similar to the setting powder, which it has that very thin powdery look, but it also has a nice pearl that kind of shifts and adds dimension to your cheeks. I think these are a wonderful addition to my collection. Here are the Givenchy loose powder blushes swatched. So we have one, four, and five. And another thing I was initially concerned about is I thought that I was going to waste a lot of the powder by dipping directly into this pile of powder here. But what I actually do is I just take whatever's left on the cap. So I'll take my brush, go like this, and it picks up the perfect amount. And if I decide I need a little bit more pigment, I'll just flip it, add more to the cap, tap it, and then I'll have more on the cap. So that's my preferred technique using these so I don't waste a speck of powder. Oh God. Mm. These have been out for a million years too, but these are the Clinique Cheek Pops. My two favorite shades are of course, Black Honey and Cola. I'll give these ones a swatch here. Oh, I should have swatched the other ones. I'll do that in a second. They're similar, but one's just a bit more punchy. This is Black Honey, really cute shade for every day, and this is Cola. I feel like it, they're like sisters, but this one has a bit more of an attitude. But this is a really interesting blush formula. At first I thought they were maybe like a baked pressed formula, but they actually start off as a liquid and then they're pressed. So that's why they have like that, this kind of stiff feel initially. But once you work a brush in here or your finger, you can feel it loosening up and it almost melts, but it still has the effect of a baked blush with a little bit more intensity and they feel really nice and they have a gorgeous luminosity to them that doesn't really look pearly or glittery. It's really interesting. They just glow on their own. Really pretty. I feel like this is one of the products that's on your bingo card and you'd be right. So stamp that part. These are the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veils. And this is the same formula as the Skin Enhancer, which you, yeah, I'm obsessed with. We all know. But this is a really nice cream blush formula. It's very sheer, but not so sheer that you're wasting your money. It's the perfect kind of sheer for a no makeup makeup look. 
or if you just want like a softer blush look for the day. They also have a really nice dew to them, but they stick down to your cheeks because they have a little bit of a powdery feel too. So they have really good longevity. So they're not going to disappear like a dewy blush would. So my two favorite shades are Barely Blushing, which is one of my favorites for layering as well, which I'll talk about in a second. And this pink is perfect pink and it is really perfect. It has a cool tone, but also like a little bit of warmth that just makes it really flattering and not too powdery on the skin powdery and like powdery pink not in texture so they're wonderful on their own but they're also incredible for layering if you want to create your own kind of blush mix my favorite one to layer with barely blushing is one of my other ones included in today's video dior rosewood and this was so exciting to me. I was so excited to see that Dior was extending their shade range in these blushes, the Rosy Glow blushes. We all love, well, maybe not all of us, but a lot of people love the pink one, as do I, and I was so excited for these two ones specifically, Cherry and Rosewood. Rosewood has become my most used out of all of the shades I own. It's just a very easy one to build, and this has a super unique texture. It feels like it's almost combined with a very pretty blurring translucent powder. So Cherry has quite a punch to it. Rosewood is a little bit more sheer, kind of like the pink one, but these really release their magic when you actually apply them on your cheek they just have more vibrance to them once they adjust to like the creamier products and they're just amazing another great option if you're heavy-handed with blush because you're able to build them up the way you like without immediate intensity so i was really excited about this shade extension and my last favorite which is also a shade extension Patrick Ta came out with some other beautiful shades in the Double Take Cream and Powder Blushes. I only have two out of the three, I believe. This is She's Giving, and she's giving a lot. It's a super, super vibrant, cool pink. So this is the cream side, and here is the powder. It's like super, super neon. I haven't had like the best chance to really work this into a look yet because it's so almost intimidating because it's like so violently pink. <laughs> But this one is in the shade She's Wanted and She Was. It's so pretty. It's the wine blush color of my dreams. So this is the cream side and look at that. It looks like you just poured wine on your cheek in the best way. And here's the powder. And I love putting this one on my lips. I'm not sure if you're like really meant to do that, but I do it anyways because it makes such a pretty lip color. And you guys know my spiel by now about these. I just love the versatility of them. You can wear either side of loan or mix them and layer them. It's fun times. It's really fun times. I feel like 2022 was the year for base for me, but this year it's the year for eye products and lip products. So get ready because I have a ton here. I actually have quite a few eyeshadow palette favorites coming out of this year. There's one kind of honorable mention, but I've been so severely obsessed with it that it just had to be included in today's video. I guess I'll talk about it right now. The Swan Ballet Collection from Flower Nose, specifically this one here. This is White Swan. I have been wanting to wear this on my eyes every single day since I received this collection in PR. The formulas are incredible and the shimmers is what really gets me. This is the more satiny, glittery shade. Their product products glow like none other. It almost feels like they like included LEDs and they're truly magic. Like they reflect the light like crazy. So that's that shade, but the glittery shade is where it's at. It's like the most beautiful glittery top coat. It feels like Urban Decay Moon Dust without the base color. Just that magical, beautiful glitter top coat. And the glitters lay so flat, which makes the light reflect like crazy. And the matte shades in here are easy to work with. They're super blendable and they're not like the classic Asian beauty sheer eyeshadows like they have a little bit more oomph to them than like a sheer veil they're still quite sheer you can't get the most pigment like classic Western beauty eyeshadows but they're just a little bit more punchy than others but yeah I'm super super excited about flower nose like I've been stalking the website and I've just been like drooling over all of their products I'm super excited about this brand in that same breath I guess I'll jump around to the eye glitters from flower nose as well this is my favorite way to apply glitter. I feel like it's a lot more hassle-free. This is what I'm wearing in my inner corners and in the center of my eye look here. It's the shade 02 
Shining Nova. This one's gorgeous. It's like a nice golden shade, but it also has some silver and some pink in it. It's really fun. But this is my favorite way to apply glitter because it's not going to fall out on your face. And this is a really nice formula because it doesn't crumble throughout the day. I've never had a glitter fall on my cheek. And this is also really impressive because sometimes with glitter liners they'll kind of hydrate like a matte shadow and it'll kind of create like this weird darkened spot that doesn't happen with this at all i don't understand so these have been really exciting too but let's revert back to eyeshadow palettes this one is my eyeshadow palette of the year okay at first i was like oh do i need another neutral palette and yeah I did because this one has been kind of uh, life changing for my eyeballs. I just love Patrick Ta's eyeshadow formula. I love how this one's all matte and I like how you get a cool toned row and a warm toned row and these two gel liners that are amazing. I'm wearing a little bit under my eye here, kind of hugging my lash line just for more intensity. They're very easy to work with. You can use them in a variety of ways as eyeshadow bases, as eyeliners on their own, or just to enhance anything. I use them all the time just on their own as eyeliners. I'll just peach this out of my drawer just to use these but the matte eyeshadow formula is so good it's very airy and moussey so it's easy to blend out but they're so pigmented like this black shadow here looks like an abyss like it's so so dark and black and pigmented you only need a little bit and it will just intensify your eye look like crazy i'm almost like scared to do like a black smoky eye with it because i feel like it's going to create a black hole this is my favorite eyeshadow palette right now this one's more of like a cutesy everyday palette i'm wearing it on the majority of my eyes today it's the cleo napping cheese palette at first i bought this because i was like it's so funny it includes my favorite things cats naps and cheese okay and it comes with these cute little stickers that you can customize your palette with i just put this cute little guy because it looked kind of like steve one of my cats but this is what the inside of the palette looks like there used to be a slice of cheese here but i use this shade so often it's disappearing now. There's also a cat paw here, here, and a C for Cleo. These are really nice airy shades. These are more like your typical Asian beauty eyeshadow formula. Like they're very easy to work with, but they're a lot sheerer. And the shimmers in here are stunning. Again, I'm comparing them to Urban Decay Moon Dust. They have that gorgeous luminosity to them, especially this shade right here. These ones have a little bit more of like a classic satiny texture to them, but they're really pretty and really fun to work with. This is one of the palettes I would use on the daily just because it's very easy to use. I like how no matter what I do with this, I'll end up with like a soft everyday appropriate kind of look if I want more of that softened look. But yeah, I really like it. And it comes with this cutesy little brush that's actually good quality. So this had to be in here because it's so cute. And this one's a little random inclusion, but I am so excited about this little quad. This is the Glowish by Huda Beauty Moss Micro Mini Palette because I've been searching for green eyeshadows that actually look green on the eye. Like what you're seeing on the in the pan here translates on the eye. There's so many times that a shadow will look like this in the pan and it will completely catfish me and it will look like a slate gray and it just looks ugly and not what I want at all. But this gives me me what I want and it's perfect for like those strawberry looks if I want to use like a really strawberry pink blush and a pink lip it just ties it all together really cutely I just adore this one and the eyeshadow formula is really nice it's comparable to Huda Beauty of course they feel like the nice moisturized eyeshadows that are easy to layer and build up and they don't crease so this was really exciting to me I finally found my perfect little green palette okay here are some quick swatches of this moss quad. So now I have one more eyeshadow. These are the Bodyography Glitter Pigments. I tried to shove as much of these products on my face as I could. I'm wearing this shade Celestial. I'm going to try to swatch it. I'm, unfortunately, I'm kind of unable to with my stupid nails, so I have to do it on my knuckle. I used a brush today, but usually I'll just use my fingertip when I'm working with these. But here's Celestial amazing if you like like the hourglass scattered lights or like the old tart ones like they came in a pot i forget what they're called but they were very metallic like that but this has a lot of glitter in it too it has a gorgeous base shimmery satin look with a lot of glitter and so much dimension and the other shade i have is mood which is a magical bronzy brown like when you look at this you're like okay that's just a brown that i've seen 500 times but the glitter in this shade is crazy. There's some pink and blue and green. Like it's like a rainbow within a beautiful bronzy eyeshadow. But look at that. 
And if I blend Celestial a little bit more, you can see the glitters better. But what makes these almost magical is that when you're working with them and you're blending them out, they don't fall out all over my face. I don't know how, but they have a really good moisturized base that just grabs a hold of all of its glitter and it doesn't like float around. So I whipped these out a ton this last year. I only have one mascara. We all know what it is already. It's the Clio Kill Lash Super Proof Mascara. I use the one volume curling, but they also have a few others, like just a lengthening one. I don't know. There's like a whole list of them, but I like volume curling. My favorite thing about it is how much it keeps the curl in my lash. It's like none other. My lashes don't fall at all throughout the day. And this mascara can stay on for days. I recently found that out in kind of an unfortunate situation. I talked about it recently. Yeah, it just stays on and it doesn't smudge or flake. I can use it on my top lashes and my bottom lashes with no issue. Waterproof. It's truly super proof. It goes through it all and it's magical. I will say like I was a little bit unimpressed with my first few uses of it, but it gets better with age. That's when the volume comes out when it's a little bit aged and thickened. That's where it gets magical. Yes, it's good. I also have a discount code for Stylevana. That'll be in the description box down below next to like these Asian beauty products. And I just wanted to quickly mention my favorite brow product of the year. They're both from Rare Beauty. The brow gel is amazing. It's like brow cement, but there has been a lot of brow products like this recently, like the Anastasia Brow Freeze or like the Refi one. But what really turned me off of those ones is that if I was in a warmer climate, they would turn white and crusty in my brows. This one doesn't. It just stays nice and clear. Even if my eyebrows do detach from my skin, it doesn't get weird, but this you can super laminate your brows to your face, or you can just brush them up and place them where you like, kind of like what I do, and your brows are going to stay there all day. I also really enjoy their brow pencil. It's similar to the Kosas Brow Pop, but it has a little bit more of a powdery, waxy feel instead of Kosas has more of like a glowy, waxy texture. But it has that same Kosas shape where it's like a mini little diamond so you're able to fill in your brows a variety of ways depending on which way you hold the pencil You can get like hair like strokes or if you flip it on its side You can fill in a bigger area or you can really sculpt a brow really great pencil I use the shade cool brown. So that's it for eyes now Let's dive into my million lip products starting with lip liners So some of my favorites were the tower 28 multi liners and what's fun about these is that you can also use them on your eyes Lani's trying to break in like my last video. I used the brown one on my eyes a few times. They're similar in texture to the Makeup Forevers, but just a little bit more pungent in color. Like they have a little bit more of an opaque look. My favorite shade was the shade Fill Me In, which is a cute pinky shade really nice. My other favorite was Work of Art, which is the perfect kind of nudey brown color. So kind of everything I love. A nice pinky one, a nudey one, and a really nice liner shade, like the perfect brown. But these have a really nice creamy texture, but they have great longevity. These were some of my purse staples. I had to actually get the pink one out of there. This is another one. I've almost lost it like four times. I think it's because it's such a treasure and it's so limited edition that it's like so rare to me and I feel like I'm going to lose it. But this is the e.l.f. Jennifer Coolidge lip liner in the shade Fill Frontal. It's such a nice formula and the color is just killer. It's really killer. This is the lip liner I'm wearing today. I love how nude pink it is, but it also has like a contour effect to it and it just pairs well with everything. And the texture is wonderful. I can't wait to try their new lip liners to see if they're this formula because if they are, we're going to be golden. I'm so excited, but this color and this formula is so good. And my last favorites have been the Jones road ones. These also have been in my purse. My favorite shade is mauve, which is like kind of similar. I guess it's quite similar to e.l.f., but just a little bit more pink. Also the shade rosewood. I can see like a lot of brands are starting to take inspiration from Makeup Forever. They all have this nice powdery, creamy feel. And this last one is nude pink, but they're really nice and they have good longevity too. So these have been my new favorites coming out of this year. Okay, so I have a variety of formulas here. I have like gloss sticks, glosses, and lip oils in one. And then I have lipsticks and lip stains. I guess let's start with lip glosses. I can't talk about this lip liner without this gloss. This is amazing for soft glam looks when I just want kind of like a, like a milky pink lip. It's the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss Formula in the shade Swollen. I'll add a little bit to this, why not? But it just has like a nice, very cool pink see-through look. And it looks so cute paired with so many different types of looks. So 
Love that with like a nice rich brown smoky eye. One of my favorite combos. That's such a nice formula. I'm usually not a huge fan of plumping lip glosses, but this one's not gloopy. It doesn't sting my lips off. It's a really nice one. Speaking of e.l.f., they came out with their version of a lip oil, and they're pretty much identical to the Dior lip ones. They even have like that nice minty cooling feel and smell, but these ones are a little bit more minty, and that's so nice. I'm such a huge fan of a mint lip lip product. Ooh, so good. My favorite shade is Rose Envy. I purchased four of them and I did a little lip swatch reel and short. It's up on my channel. I'll try to include as much reel content so you can see these in action. And I would say you don't need to buy as many as I did. They kind of look all the same on my lips, aside from this one that has a little bit more of like a milky consistency. Like it's not so translucent like this shade Pink Quartz is. Like the ones that have a little bit more of a dense pigment to them show up a little bit better on the lips. Otherwise, they kind of just look like a sheer gloss. But really nice formula, it has that nice thicker lip oil feel. It does feel similarly to a gloss, but if you're familiar with the Dior lip oils, that's how they feel. They feel a little bit tacky, but they have a good suspension on the lips, like they don't bleed all over the place like some other lip oils. Really good formula. Pretty much identical, but almost better in my opinion. I prefer these over a lot now. I prefer these over the NYX Fat Lip Drip oils so good and they have that same chubby applicator but feels so good to rub on your lips these are some of my sneaky favorites but what really caught my attention about this collection oh first of all these are the Kleidos untamed glow glossy lip glaze what's fun about this line is that they're all kind of cool toned shades which I feel like cool toned lip products aren't really coming out on the market so that's what really grasped my attention and this shade free fall is my favorite because it's such a pretty glitter gloss like it's almost magical I don't know if it's going to translate in this specific setting but in direct sunlight crazy it has a little bit of like a gray tint to it but that kind of goes away once you put it on your lips my other favorite color from this line is hot pursuit and this one has more of like a flat color to it but it has this really pretty brownish coolish tone to it that I find to be so unique and pretty but this one's texture is truly like a glaze it's super silky and rich feeling but it doesn't like separate or leave your lips at all really unique mouthfeel and I love that so unique all around in its packaging its formula and their colors I have some more glittery glosses I wanted to highlight the ones from half magic beauty I wore this so much in the summertime these are the magic drip glosses Glosses, one in the shade Frosty Bitch, this one's my favorite, and the other Magic Brownie. Frosty Bitch is so gorgeous. It's kind of like the bodyography mood eyeshadow in the way that it has all the different colored glitters. And I usually am not fond of glittery lip glosses, but you can't feel the gritty glitter at all. Only if you like super rub your lips together, like with a lot of force. But if you're just doing like a normal lip rub, lip press, you don't feel it at all. But these are gorge. It's not giving in this light, but just trust me. That's it for glosses. Now let's go on to gloss sticks. So these are huge loves of mine. I think what I love most about them is like the discourse they had on the internet. And I was like really annoyed by that because these are actually so good. I was wearing, before I added the Jennifer Coolidge gloss, I was wearing this shade right here, the shade Amped. I just, I don't understand the whole crazy discourse that these had on the internet because it's not like we're new. We've seen this formula before, like in the About Face Cherry Pick lip color butters, the Makeup by Mario ones, the Tarte ones that every TikTok person was shoving down our throats like this isn't a new formula where you have to click it up a little bit and then it melts on your lips because it's a gloss stick but anyways if you use these properly they're amazing and they're so fun to create lip combos I pulled out my favorite shades so amped squirt which is a lime green looks amazing paired with a brown lip liner the red one gorgeous in the summertime paired with like a, a red lip stain or like a red blush gorgeous it's like a really pretty strawberry pink this brown one in the shade simulation and the black one looks amazing with really dark and rich lip liners i have quite a few videos or shorts i mean creating fun lip combos and i also swatched every single one of these on their own on my lips 
so I'll include footage of that as well. But you have to be delicate with these. You just have to scroll them up like once or twice and then you just have to be very gentle. Like you don't want to press a lot or else of course they'll break like any other formula like this. But I think these are really fun and transformative and they just got my brain going with color theory and I thought they were so fun. So yes, they're sheer, but they add a lot of oomph to a fun lip combo. And they're super, super glossy. Like look at that glazed look amazing truly one of my top favorite products from mac but as i hinted the about face lip color butters had to be in this video that was almost a tongue twister about face lip color butters i pulled my favorite colors too number one pomplebus it's just a pretty pinky color if you're comparing these to the makeup by mario these are a lot more vibrant in color they have a lot more of an opaque effect ew Something gross is happening to my lip combo. Jennifer was not vibing with MAC, and that's okay. I'm just gonna throw on this one. This is the e.l.f. e.l.f. lip oil in Rose Envy. These are super uber pigmented. Pomplamus, the pink one is Dragon Fruit, fruit <laughs> oh my god, help. Dragon Fruit Fusion, and the brown one is the Cranberries. So really fun, you get that super intense glow that you can get from this type of formula. I think this was my top used lip product of the year. This is the L'Oreal Glow Paradise Balm in Lipstick in the shade 130 Nude Heaven. I have a few other shades in my collection, but nothing compares to Nude Heaven for me. This is such a unique formula because it feels very thin and almost has like a powdery feeling that like a matte lipstick would. So if you're not a fan of like a lip oil or a classic gloss, you find it to be goopy, but you still admire the glowy effect. I would try these because they don't really feel like a, a glossy product whatsoever. They're really interesting. And this color is just everything. And the last one in this section, also kind of new to me, the Flower Nose. I forget what they're called. It's written in Chinese, I believe here. So I don't know what it is, but it's the shade Silver Moon. Here, I'm going to even put it on right now because I'm not a fan of this color with my cheek. At first... I thought that these were just going to look like any other tinted balm, but I was so wrong. It adds such a glossy glow to my lips. Look at that. It just, oh, I don't know. Its glow is so pretty and unique. It feels very dewy, has a really nice slip to it, but it's not very thick leaning on my lips. It just feels natural, like something's not even there. It makes my lips look so hydrated and plump, even if they're like the driest thing ever. Such a pretty effect. I am very excited about this too. Now I'm going to save lip stains for the end, so I still have some swatching areas. I just have two favorite lipsticks. So I found a new red that I adore and it's the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet in the shade 36. I believe this is a limited edition. It might be the tube. I hope it's not the color because this is such a nice red. I recently created a look using this. It's my perfect holiday look I just uploaded. Oh, the color is so nice and vibrant. It's like a pretty true blue red, but its formula is really really admirable. It's a matte, but it doesn't enhance all of your texture on your lips. It doesn't en enhance the fine lines or anything like that. Even if my lips are a little bit dry, I can wear this because it feels really silky and hydrating, which is wild for such a matte look. I'm very picky with red lipsticks. The last favorite I had was the Uncensored from Fenty Beauty, which is the matte liquid lipstick that came out like so long ago. That was my last favorite red, but now I have another contender and it's this one. It's so stunning. The formula is so nice and rich and the, this whole packaging situation, so cute. I love how it looks like a little disco ball. So I had to rave about that for a second. And my other favorite lipstick formula is the e.l.f. O Face Lipsticks. My two favorite shades are Shameless. Shameless is more wearable for sure. But this is a really nice satiny lipstick. Feels super high end. It has a magnet closure. They feel a lot like the original Bite Beauty lipsticks that were so magical and wonderful. Really nice and rich. And the other one that really impresses me all the time is the black lipstick in the shade All Night. <laughs> It's just like the best black lipstick I've ever found. And I can't believe it's from the drugstore. Usually black lipsticks from the drugstore are very sheer or like green and uncomfortable, but this one's so rich and pigmented, it's wild. I feel like this is a good indication of a good lipstick formula. They're all like this. And you can really see it's sheen in there. Very comfortable, gorgeous formula. Now let's tackle my lip stains. I feel like I fell deeply in love with lip stains this year. I discovered the magic of them and I have quite a few formulas here. So starting with the Rare Beauty ones, these are marketed as lip oils, but I kind of feel like they named them wrong. Now looking 
at this launch from a distance. They are more like lip stains or lip lacquers, but although a funny name, beautiful nonetheless. So here are my four favorites from this line. So we have Hope, Affection, Delight, and wander. Here you can see them a little bit more clearly now. This one was like the one I would reach for every day. This one if I wanted more of like a intense lip focused look. This is a really cute brownie color and more of a vibrant pink, but really cute. You can see it's finished here. It looks more like a lip lacquer, but it still has a little bit of an oily feel too. But these wear so well and they stain so evenly and the stain lasts a long time. And you can reapply it without your lips feeling super dry and cracky, which is an issue when it comes to a lot of lip oils. But you don't even really have to retouch these throughout the day unless if you want to retouch like the glowy effect. Otherwise, the stain has your back. So I'm going to let this marinate for a little bit and then I'll wipe them off. But let's Let's talk about another formula that's very similar to the Rare Beauty, which are the Romand Juicy Lasting Tints. This is super similar in a lot of ways, and they have a million colors, which is so fun and definitely overwhelming. But here are a few of my favorites. This is Bear Grape. This is the one I used the most. Bear Grape. Very cute. This one, 23 Nucadamia. This is 22 Pomelo Skin. Kind of a softer version of Nucadamia. Fig Fig 06. If you like Black Honey, it's kind of in that realm of tone. And then my last one is this really cute milkshake shade. It is the shade 32 Bear Berry Smoothie. It's a really pretty, super cool toned pink. So there's those ones. I will say that the Rare Beauty ones stain a little bit more consistently than these ones. These ones fade throughout the day a little bit, but like it still wears really well. But they're similar in a sense where they still have that lacquered look. They're not as glass looking as Rare Beauty, but you can see still has that pretty glow. And Romant has another uh, formula that I am so in love with. It's the Glasting Water Tint, which they actually came out with a few more shades. But the two I've got are Rose Stream. And what makes this one different in comparison to the Juicy Lasting Tints is that they almost have two levels to them. The first one being like a really pretty clear gloss, and then the stain lies underneath of it. So it looks like you applied a few lip products to achieve this look. It's really, really pretty. So Rose Stream and this brown shade is Vintage Ocean. And my last formula that I love is the Amuse Dew Tints. I really like the shade Dew Buxunga and Sunday. This one has such a lovely formula. Really, really rich. I think this is my favorite in texture out of the Korean beauty ones I'm mentioning here. Just its texture is so refined and gorgeous, but their shades are all very pinky and warm. So the darker one, I swatched these weird. The darker one is the shade Sunday and this one's Du Buxunga. So I'm gonna let this marinate and then I'll wipe it all off so we can see the reveal of the stain. Okay, I feel like it's been long enough. So here's the Rare Beauty ones. You can see that they stain very evenly. So you can see the staining in the Juicy Lasting Tints are a little bit less impactful here, especially with these uh, lighter shades, Nucadamia and Pomelo Skin. These ones are better, and the Amuse ones are super consistent as well. I didn't let these ones really have a chance to get in there. I would say from best in staining, I'd say the best is Rare Beauty, then it would go to the Glasting Water Tints and Amuse, then Juicy Lasting Tints. Okay, but those were all of my favorite lip products. And I guess that concludes my 2023 favorites. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I will list and link everything I talked about in today's video in the description box down below. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.